Hi everyone. For our second lesson, I thought we'd do something a little 3D, which might be kind of fun. So, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but in the last few three, four weeks, there was quite a run on toilet paper and there, it was hard to get. And I'm hoping that all of you have your fair share of toilet paper. And if so, you should have these. And they're great for making toilet paper roll people, right? So I thought maybe we could start by doing kind of a, a toilet paper roll person. You can choose to do maybe a self portrait, make yourself or not. Um, anything goes, that's my new motto for these videos because we have to just be creative and use what we have and anything goes. So if you want to make an alien, make an alien. If you want to make a self portrait, do a self portrait. If you want to make your parents, do your parents. Uh, or you can make multiples and you can make maybe your whole family. Um, just to keep a hold of these, don't recycle them, all right? Uh, so you're gonna need one toilet paper roll person. Here's the basic supplies. One toilet paper roll. You're going to need um, paper. And the easiest way to do that is to just maybe get a magazine that you have around the house or even a newspaper. Because newspaper has some, uh, mostly it's black and white, but it does have some color photographs in a newspaper, which you could use the color part. Uh, you're gonna need some scissors you're going to need some sort of adhesive, all right? So I have three different types here. I have regular Elmer's glue, I have a glue stick, and I have tape. I'll use all three of these so you can see how they all work. The tape is actually really easy and works really well. So if you just have tape, that's great. Uh, and last, you might need a, like a black pen, a ballpoint pen, or a Sharpie marker, or a black marker. And then possibly, some colored markers for other details, all right? Not necessary, but uh, if you have it, uh, that would be great. Um, so basic supplies, some sort of adhesive, scissors, paper, and a paper, uh, toilet paper roll, okay? Uh, I'm also gonna use a ruler, so if you have a ruler, that'd be great. If you don't have a ruler, um, a pencil will be a good measuring tool, so you can use a pencil. All right, so uh, these are the ones that I made. Let's say they're, they're the parents. And this one I made is very elaborate, right? I put, um, I used this sisal string for the hair. That was kind of a bear to get that on. So might recommend that you use yarn if you wanted to make hair or old uh, needlepoint thread is good. Uh, I used tissue paper from a wrapped old wrapping package and I used wrapping paper and ribbon. Uh, so I used a lot of my gift wrapping supplies. Now, uh, depending on what you have around the house, uh, that might be really accessible to you. I have some samples here, gift wrapping paper, polka dots, which is really cute. Uh, and I have um, plaid, which is very cool. Some of the gift wrapping paper has a grid on the back side, which is like a measuring tool, right? Each grid, each square is, is an inch. So we're gonna be using some measuring for this, for the cutting of the paper. So if you do have wrapping paper that has this grid and you wanna use it, then you don't need a ruler, okay? Um, some other things that you can use, I have some bubble wrap. I thought maybe of making like a puffer jacket with a bubble wrap. Um, I have tape that has stars on it. Here's extra wrapping ribbon that I have. So really a really great, um, here's some yarn that can be used for hair. Really, I guess the best supplies would be if you have a lot of great wrapping paper supplies. Like old Hanukkah wrapping, Christmas wrapping, or birthday wrapping supplies, that would be a really great source to go to to get your supplies. Uh, so now would be a good time to stop the video, go get your supplies, and then come on back and we'll start. So if you have your supplies, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our toilet paper roll and take a look at it, its measurements, right? I'm gonna use my, my ruler right here, I'm gonna put my magazine aside and what I'll do for you I'm going to put my two little people aside and I'm going to put 
one of these rolls up front so you can have that as a reference. What it's basically saying is the face area is going to be about an inch and a quarter, the shirt area is going to be about an inch and a quarter, and the pants slash skirt area is going to be about an inch and a half. Okay, so when you're cutting your paper, you're going to think in those measurements. Um, for my younger artists, this assignment might be really great just to do a face, shirt, pants, and then draw in the face and maybe draw in some accessories, which I'll show you in a little bit. For my older students and even adults who are doing the project, uh, you can, you know, sky's the limit. You can put belts on, you can put buttons, you can, I don't know, put pockets all kinds of stuff on the clothing. So we'll, I'll show you a little bit about that too. But I'm gonna leave this up here so you have these measurements to refer to. Your toilet paper roll is about four inches long, right? Um, let's put that this way, four inches, right? And so I, I have divided it up into the three sections, the face and head area, the blouse or shirt area, and the pant or skirt area. Uh, and we're gonna work in stages going down the, the piece. First we're gonna lay in the face, then we're gonna lay in the shirt, then we're gonna lay in the pants, so, and then we'll accessorize on top of that. All right, so I will start by cutting my face, or I, I, will, I will attach the face first. Now you have a choice in terms of what kind of face you wanna put on. If you want to have a brown-skinned person, you're gonna just leave the color that's on the toilet paper roll, but you're gonna make sure that you know which is the side of the face. Like this side is really nice and it doesn't have any markings on it. It's nice and clean. So you have to know which side is the front of your face. Otherwise you might put, um, it might end up being where one of these seams come through the, your face and you wanna stay away from that just to make it look like there's not a big line through the face, okay? So just identify where's the front of the body and so that you know that, right? Brown skin person. If you want a lighter skin person, you might need to get another piece of uh, white printer paper or you can go through your magazine and there's lots of different lighter pages. Like here's a really pretty, um, it's like the flowering cherry trees and it's kind of a pink skin. Uh, here's a kind of a skin tone color on this page, all right? Or you can do a rainbow person. So each, each of your dolls can have a different color face. Okay, so I want to start by showing you uh, how to cut the paper in the correct uh, lengths and widths to go around the toilet paper roll. So as you go through your paper source, whether it's the wrapping paper or it's your magazine, you want, I'm going to do magazine since that's what I'm doing. You want to find a page, all the pages with the um, colors that you like and that you want to use for those three areas, right? For the face, for the top, and for the bottom. Um, I love my little chili peppers here. So I'm going to tear this page out. Get my ruler. And we're going to uh, measure out six inches, right? So six, actually, this is perfect. From the edge of this page to the edge of the yellow is six inches. <laughs> so that could be easier. I'll put a little bit further, so like that. And then we're going to, we want to, um, we want to make an inch and a half. Since I have such a rough border here, I want to cut a nice straight line. So I'm going to measure my, m m take my ruler a little in and measure my inch and a half. And I might make it a little bit, a slightly bigger than an inch and a half because it's okay if the layers overlap in, on, the, on, the, on the points where they intersect. It's okay if they overlap. That makes it so you don't have any of the um, toilet paper rolls showing. So. I'm going to kind of eyeball my cutting here. I know that I'm going to go right down the edge where the where this line is. I'm just going to cut right down there. And then I know that I need to cut a clean line on this side. So I'm going to start right in here and I'm just going to carefully cut all the way down 
until I get to my marker mark that over there and then I'll cut the other side and I've set that aside since I've already pre-cut it and I've pre-cut all my other ones just to make this go faster so I chose a kind of a turbulent stormy sky and it has these kind of this mountain range in the background and when I looked at it I thought well that would kind of be cool if the blue is the face and the mountain range kind of represented the hair right so I decided to do that so I cut this instead of cutting it an inch and a quarter I cut it a little bit bigger I cut it about an inch and a half just because I wanted the hair to pop out a little over the top like that see how it's popping out over the top and then I don't have to worry about which side of the toilet paper roll is the best because I'm actually using a different color for the face. So I can wrap it around anytime I, any way I want. And I'm going to make sure that I pinch it together like that. I have a little bit of hair peeking over the top. I'm going to use tape for this. And I'm going to tape it down to the toilet paper roll. All right? So face layer done. Easy. Now, I'm going to do my shirt layer, and my shirt layer is this kind of stripy brown woody kind of pattern that I got from Sunset Magazine, and I'm going to lay that over the face a little bit. Actually, I'm just going to butt it right up against because it's cut so nicely, it just kind of fits really easy. And again, I'm going to try to keep all the seams in the back meeting up, right? All the seams in the back meeting up. So I'm going to do that. If it doesn't, if it's not cut very well, you can always overlap it slightly over the face, right? Put another piece of tape on. Right? And there's my shirt layer. Right? Easy face, hair for me. I'll show you how to do a uh, separate hair too if you want. And then I need to put my pants on. So, and I want to make sure that I know where's my face. My face, here's my tape, so that's basically my back. So here's my face in the front. And I want to start here. And again, my see how it's a little big, a little thicker? But that's okay because I can just overlap it over the shirt a little bit until it becomes flush. And wrap it around on one side, wrap it around on the other. And then right where that back seam is, I'm going to add my last piece of tape. Right? So we have, again, a face, a shirt, and some sort of pant area. So um, I think I want to do like, uh, like pockets or cargo pant kind of effect on the bottom. So I'm going to have to find... Um, something in my book for that right or your paper source whatever it is and I picked this little kind of uh, polka dot pattern here because I thought it would look cute with my chili peppers and I want to create a, um, a pocket so I start to cut like a square and then I put like a an arrow on the bottom of the square and I'm gonna want to do that twice but I'll show you one first It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's kind of a little. And again, I've got to find my face. This is my face. And I want to attach it here on the side, right? It can be up here, close if it was like pants. Or it could be on the side if it was going to be like cargo pants. Or it could be up front if it was going to be like a pocket on a skirt, right? So you decide. I'll put mine kind of up top a little bit more. And I'm going to use, for this, I'm going to use my glue stick. And the glue stick is just easy because you just... Kind of roll it around on the top of the glue stick and you put it right on top here. So one little pocket down. Now let's do another pocket. Grab my, my paper, cut another little square with an arrow on the top of it. Kind of looks like that. Put a little glue on that, my glue stick, and put it on the other side. 
right? So what I'm doing is I'm kind of starting to do the accessories, right? So um, we'll keep going with the accessories, but I want to show for my younger artists that after you put maybe one accessory, and you can draw this on too, right? You could take your marker or uh, uh, your um, colored marker, and you could draw pockets, you could draw buttons, right? You can use this to do that. Um, what I want to do is I want to do the face, especially for our younger artists who this might be enough, they might be done now. I just want to put a face on for them and then they can be finished or they can continue to work with us while we uh, embellish and put more accessories on it, okay, for my older uh, artists. So I want to make like eyes, a nose, and a mouth, okay? So the simplest way would, would be to do that with a marker, right? or a pen. If we had a pen, we could do it with a pen. Uh, marker's good. So you'll notice on here, I used a, uh, I gave my person blue eyes and I just used a little colored uh, pencil for that. And the same thing here, I gave brown eyes or black eyes. And I just did a really simple little eye form. I kind of like that. Um, but you can make any eye you want. What I did is I made this little chart for you guys. Cause eyes, this can be really expressive. You can do eyes any way you want. Here's a kind of an anime kind of eye, or you can do kind of this um, almond shape with eyelashes, and there's a more simplified shapes of eyes. This is kind of more what I did. Um, and then we have nose shapes. This is a simple, like it looks like two parentheses with two dots inside, um, or just a long kind of check mark, right? Backward check mark. And then the eyebrows are kind of fun to do, like a worried eyebrow or an angry eyebrow or a villain eyebrow or a surprised eyebrow or just a happy eyebrow, right? So there's different um, uh, options there for you. I'll put it right here so hopefully you can see that while we're working. So I'll do a simpler face. I like just doing my little dots for eyes. Another thing that you can do, which is really fun, is um, if you have a hole punch, <laughs> I don't have a single hole punch, I just have this three hole punch, you can take a piece of paper out and, and hole punch an eye, right? Um, and then I discovered this on mine when I opened mine up. See how I have all these old hole punches in there? And I have some really fun colors. So like I have a green, I have some green there and some yellow. Uh, do I have another green? That would be fun for green eyes. But you can also you can always pick some colors out and make your eyes out of hole punches, right? Um, let me get this on the right. My little my green eyes might be cute, right? But in case you don't have a hole punch, I am going to just draw it on. Okay, if you just have a marker, or for my younger students. So. I have to know where my pockets are. This is my face up here. Here's my hairline where the mountains and the sky meet. So I want to draw, I'm just going to draw my little circles. I'll draw them a little bigger than last time. Right? Eyes. Maybe I'll just go all, I'm just going to color them all in. I think I like it just solid. And then if you want to do a really simple nose for um, my younger artists, I would just do a, like a backward check mark, right? Right? And then if you had color markers, you could always make the lips with a colored marker and just a little heart shape. It's a good mouth, right? A heart shape. So that would be really simple. That'd be a simple face for the your, your person, right? So from here, I will start. I'll, I might do some other different types of face stuff uh, and just put it on top of here, but I just wanted to show you just a simple face for a younger artist to, to draw. But let's work on some of our accessories now, okay? So keeping in mind that it's always going to be really flat, um, nothing's going to really pop out as in like a three-dimensional arm coming out. So we have to just kind of um, use our imagination to find fun ways to accessorize. Um, one of the things I wanted to put on was a belt. So I found some colors. 
I, I saw this picture in the magazine and I liked this blue is really pretty with the orange. So I thought, oh, we have some kind of orangey here. And I thought of maybe making this person a redhead. So I, I just was captured by the blue. I thought the blue would look really cool as a belt. So notice that this isn't six inches wide, long, right? So it won't really wrap around. That would be really pretty as a dress too. Cute. Um, but if I cut two pieces out, I can connect them around the body. So that's what I, was, I decided to do. So I'm going to do a belt, so it has to be kind of thin. So it, it looks like I cut about, maybe about a half an inch of paper, and then I'm just going to cut that in half, and that'll be my belt, and I'll show you how I'll put it on. So I have to be a little creative. I'm going to use my um, glue stick again. You have to be really careful with this so you don't rip the paper. I'm doing it this way, just rolling it around the top. Um, and I'm going to lay it on my belt. And then you can, as you notice, it only went around halfway. So I have to take my other half that I cut. And this is a way to, to, to get enough of a material, a piece of paper, if, if like, like in my case, this color that I really wanted to use, it wasn't a large enough area. I just cut two pieces and I do them together. All right, now I have my belt. All right, my belt, and my belt needs a buckle, right? So I thought of a yellow buckle. I kind of thought that would look really cool. And a simplified buckle might be just a rectangle. And again, I'm going to put some, you can make a round belt buckle. You could use one of these little green dots as a belt buckle, right? Or, or if you have a hole punch, you could hole punch a belt buckle out. I'm going to use my gold one. And I think I might draw like, um, maybe like a rectangle inside to make it look like the belt buckle. I outlined it with my marker to make it look like a belt buckle. Okay. And then what else could I use? I could use um, maybe a pocket for my shirt. So a pocket for my shirt. Uh, it has to be kind of small because here's my shirt here, right? So I cut out, I thought I liked the orange. As you can see, I'm an orange person. I thought the orange would look good on top of this brownish top. I thought that maybe it would look like it belonged. And my pocket's gonna have to be kind of like a really kind of small, squarish, rectangle-ish shape, right? Let's see if this is small enough. Maybe a little smaller. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick. Easy. And I'll put it on here. And then again, I want, might want to take my marker. And pockets tend to have little V's in them. Like that. Maybe outline it again. I kind of like the way the, the outline looks. Make it look like a pocket coming out. Um, so, what do we have? We have a face, nose, we have a mouth, pocket, some pants. So, I, we can draw the pants to look more like pants instead of, this could almost be a skirt too. So, if I was to want to make this look like pants, this is how I would do it. I would start in the middle, take my marker or my pen, my ballpoint pen, and I would start my belt buckle a little off. I would start right in the middle of my belt buckle and I would draw a line all the way down the middle till it goes to the bottom, right? And then there's always buttons that you button up on your pants. And I would do that by going over to the side and drawing another line down and then a diagonal line in. 
right? So now that makes it look like I have some, uh, like pants, two legs, right? And I can even put like maybe a cuff on these pants if I wanted to. Like I'm sewing a cuff on there. I can go all the way around if I want to be very, very, very accurate. All right. Um, what else does my my person need? One of the things I thought of, if you want to do hair, you could do a separate hair color. Like I already cut my face a little long and I'm gonna use this top part that pops up over the roll as the hair. But if I hadn't have done that, I might wanna cut a different color um, of paper out from the magazine or your paper source and lay that right on top of the face to create, let's say, here's a red-headed person, right? Redhead. Or uh, for a girl, I was thinking of creating a girl, um, this would be more like a boy, but if I wanted to create a girl, I could put long hair on her. I'm just trying this for the first time, so you guys get to help me with this. Um, what I did is I found a, a fun, beautiful red kind of pattern and I cut a six inch long by probably about two and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna notch out each of the sides, right? So I did it here, I cut in about three quarters of an inch and I cut straight down and I'll do the same thing over here. Uh, I came down about a quarter of an inch and I notched and then I'm gonna come up from the bottom and I'm gonna cut it out. So you have kind of this like T-shape almost with a very thick bottom and, and little tiny extensions on top. And the extensions will be the bangs. So we're gonna start with the big thick part that hangs down at the back of the head and we would wrap it all the way around and she would have bangs in front. Let's see how that looks. Let's see if I can pinch that. And maybe her hair is just a little bit too long, so I'd want to cut it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to cut her hair up a little bit. So she has short, long hair, but not too long. We don't want it going past her blouse or her shirt. So I won't put that on because I'm going to keep it with the, the boy's hair, but you can see how that would look. She'd have the hair in the back right? And little bangs in the front. All right. So you could you do that too. And I would just tape it right up there, just like we did with the back. Just like how we put on the tape. I would just put a little piece of tape up there, but I'm not going to do, I'm going to keep this one. I'll show you what I'm going to do to the hair to make it kind of fun is I'm going to notch cut little bit of little bitty pieces of it out. So it kind of looks like spiky hair. You could also make a crown doing it this way. So if you wanted to make a princessy kind of look. So we have a nice little kind of, looks like uh, Bart Simpson, a little bit hair cut after you notch out. It's like you cut little triangles in the top of, of the hairline and then it kind of, and they can be really uneven and it looks like a little hairline. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to give him a little um, jacket. And I've been wanting to use my, my, my um, bubble wrap. So I cut a piece of bubble wrap and I cut the bubble wrap because I don't want the jacket to close all the way in front. I want the jacket to stay open a little bit to catch this, some of this little detail. So I cut it uh, five inches long instead of six, right? And I kept it about an inch and a quarter wide. And this time I think it's gonna be important to use the glue and when I glue I don't glue it all the way to the end and I want to take this I want to wrap it around the back to the front and so you notice the jacket will stay open a little bit in the front and it won't um, go in front of this fun little detail all right, so there's his little jacket. 
And so the face, um, you can cut, you'll notice on the other ones, I did a uh, little cut piece of paper for the nose. I did a rectangle for this uh, person. And for this person, I did a, a triangle shape. Triangle shape is good for nose too. And I cut the nose separately out of a piece of paper. So if you wanted to, like I thought for a minute that I would maybe make him a nose, uh, like a, a polka dot nose, like he had buckles. But I think I'll just keep it with the nose he has there. But you can cut a nose out of a piece of paper and put it on there. You can cut little uh, sunshiny or rosy cheeks like I did on these guys. I gave them rosy cheeks. Uh, what else could you do? Um, you could use paper to cut a mouth instead of marking it in, right? You could use red. I have some leftover red here. I could, I could have cut him a little red mouth. Um, but sky's the limit. You can use these, if you have hole punch, you can use these to create buttons, right? Um, or you can draw button holes with your pen or Sharpie marker. All right, but I think I'm gonna leave him like this. I think he looks pretty cool. So we have our, our little family here, parents, child. And you guys can make um, as many of these as you want. Think about if you made your whole class, that would be so cool to make all the students in your class and how you perceive those people, you know, how you perceive how they dress and uh, the way they look. That would be kind of fun. I might continue to make these dolls throughout the time that I'm at home just for fun, just to see how many I can make and how different I can make them. It's kind of fun. So have a great time uh, doing this project. And again, if you can send me pictures of the ones you make, I love seeing the work that you do. It makes me really happy, it makes my days. Um, you can send it through Fresh Schools or you can comment on the video. Um, any questions, maybe leave a comment for me and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, otherwise, have fun. Bye, guys.